Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good, good morning, morning good Vallejo morning. First morning. Church. How are we doing this fine Sunday morning? Amen. Amen. We are a great church serving a great God, equipping great people for a great life. Amen. Yeah. yeah amen. Amen. <laughs> so who's ready? Who's ready to hear the good news this morning? Amen. Come on. I got to hear you. Who's ready to worship and praise God in a great mighty way yeah, this yeah. morning? Come on. I got to hear it. Yes. Good morning. <laughs> First and foremost, before we start off, I just want to remind everyone that God loves you. Mm -hmm. He loves you passionately yes. and faithfully. And just let's just take a moment and give God all the praise and, and all the worship right now for blessing us this past week. Amen. Because, see, no matter how hard the test was, no matter how hard the rejection was, no matter how hard the opposition was, we made it. Amen. We made it. We are here today breathing and under God's kingdom in his house. And we are here today. Amen. So let's give him all the praise and let's give him all the glory. Amen. 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 I want to see if I'm going I'm to I'm do a test quiz. I'm going to do a test quiz. I want to see if anybody remembers last week. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, all right. Praise <laughs> the Lord! Hallelujah! <laughs> amen, amen. Pastor David. All right. <laughs> amen, amen. Well, we just give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. Listen, we're going to pray this morning, and we're going to pray in a special way. And uh, well, our prayer is special, but I'm going to go up to the altar and pray, and we want to. Uh, please gather together and lift up the name of Dorothy. She's in ICU and she's uh, praying for her healing to come through that, <clears throat> her surgery and, every, and um, all that. So we're going to um, just go up and pray here. And everyone, if you can just pray along with me. And anyway, I'm going to be praying from here. Hallelujah. 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 God, we just come this morning. And we just thank you for being God. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your healing power. God, we come this morning just giving you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. It's yours. And you deserve it all. So God, we just come thanking you for bringing us through a week to get us here today. And God, we lift up in prayer this morning, especially Dorothy, where she is in the hospital, that you just touch the doctors, touch the nurses, touch her family. Most of all, God, speak to her in a God way, a way that we know that you know how, to her mind, to her spirit, to her body. Let her know that you will never leave her nor forsake her. God, we pray, God, for everyone under the sound of my voice here that you just touch them in a special way. There's somebody in the room that may be going through some things. Let them know that you're with them. There's somebody in the room that may be having some aches and pains, but let them know that you're with them. There's somebody in the room who having family troubles. Let them know that you're with them. There's somebody in the room who don't know where their next dollar is going to come from. Let them know that you are with them. God, you never leave us, nor you forsake us. So God, we just give you all the praise and glory and honor for that. We thank you for Vallejo First Church, Vallejo First Church of the Nazarene. God, that you have just blessed this church to be here God and we thank you for the founders we thank you for the elders we thank you for everybody who were the foundation of building it to bringing it to where it is right now and God we ask that you use us as a light on this corner as a light in this community to touch somebody's life to show them that Jesus loves them that you love them and that they can be saved delivered set free that you love everybody that the blood can cover any sin any ill God we thank you God that you would just cover us in a special way thank you you for the blood that just covers all of our sins. Thank you for the blood that wipes everything clean. Thank you for the blood that just delivers us and brings us through. Thank you for the blood, God, that just has healing power in the name of Jesus. Right now, God, yes. we pray, God, that you just move in a powerful way. Move from heart to heart and breast to breast. Move, God, in a powerful way, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we thank you. 
God, that you're going to use this church to become great because you're a great God. And not great in size, but great in what we're doing and how we're going to affect the lives of the people. And God, we just give you the glory. God, we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If we haven't said I love you all week, we say it right now. I love you. And if God, if we haven't said we give you praise, we say it right now. We give you praise. If we haven't said hallelujah all week this week, God, we say it right now. Hallelujah. If we haven't said God to be praised, we say it right now. God be praised. If we haven't said God, you deserve all the honor, we say it right now. God, you deserve all the honor. So God, right now, God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the name that has all power, in the name of Jesus that every knee shall bow and every tongue that shall confess that he is Lord in the name of Jesus we pray this prayer hallelujah and all of God's children said amen amen amen, amen. amen. and amen, amen again come on let the church say amen amen, amen. let the church say amen again amen. Amen. sounds so good say it one more time let Amen. the church say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah again. Hallelujah. Oh, it sounds so good. Say it one more time. Hallelujah. Let the church say praise the Lord. Praise the praise Lord. Praise the Lord again. Yes. Oh, it sounds so good. Say it one more time. Praise Come the on, Lord. Come on, just lift your hands and just give yes. God a hallelujah wave. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. And after you get done with the wave, put those hands together and give yes. God a praise. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, okay. All right. Amen. I, I sat down, got all excited. Come on up here to catch you and lead us in a song. We, Amen. Come on. It's, it's time. It's time. All right. Y'all give the catchy a Nigerian praise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Children of God, our God is good all the time. And all the time, our God is good. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Children of God, God is good. You say, oh, all, all the, the time. time. All the time. God is good. Okay. Uh, I was taking on our words, though I didn't prepare because I didn't know I would sing. Yes. But glory be to God, <laughs> we always put words in our mouth, yeah. testimonies in our mouth. Yes. So we woke up this morning to the glory of our Father God in heaven. And when we wake up every day, we thank God. Because many people slept, they never woke up. Yes. And so, whatever you have, it is not to carry your body upon your head. But God is the greatest uh, problem solver. So in our lives, we always give thanks to God. In whatever situation and in whatever thing we are passing through, and whatever is happening, we have to give glory to God because God knows more than we yes. do. Yes. Children of God, pray! <laughs> Okay. We can still remember that we have a very big God. Yes. That God is so big, we cover the whole earth and the universe. And so, when we have a very big God, it is always by our side. You are sleeping, it's there. You are driving, it's there. Everywhere you are, it is there. Even in the restroom, it's there. Even when you are climbing the step, it's there. Yeah. You always know that when you are sitting, the next person sitting with you is your very big God. Yeah. Yes. So you are unstoppable and unshakable. Yes. I am unstoppable. Say it. Unstoppable. 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 I am unstoppable. Yes. So Satan cannot stop you. Yes. No, no. Because your God is always by your side. So we have a very big God who is always by your side. A mighty God who by my side. By my, my side. side. So we stand up now. That's, we are doing revision. <laughs> revision. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have, have a very big God. God. He's, He's 
is always by our side. The mighty God, on my side, by my side. The mighty God, is always 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 by my side. By my side, by my side. By my side, by my side, by my side, by my side, is very big God, oh, is always by my side, a very good God, by my side, by my side. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Yes, he is. Yes, he is. was that thank you thank you Nakechi thank you thank you praise the Lord hallelujah hallelujah thank you so much before we begin before we begin I want to make sure that our heart's energy our heart's energy matches the temperature here today and so I want to spill, I want to spill some spiritual tea this morning. Amen? Amen. And so I previously mentioned that this past Mother's Day, my kids gave me a blessing jar. And inside the blessing jar was these, these tiny paper scrolls. And on each scroll, they had individually wrote a hand, a Bible verse, handwritten it, tiny, in a tiny, very tiny fashion. And they rolled them back up and they put them in the blessing jar. And so this morning, the Lord put on my spirit to share a verse from my blessing jar. Amen? And I'm sharing from Psalms chapter 37, verse 3. And it says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Some years ago, when the kids had graduated from high school, and that summer as we were preparing for them to go to college, I had gone to the doctors for mild heart pains. And as I was in the hospital, the pains began to intensify to the point that I couldn't even talk. I couldn't even talk. All I could do was cry. And I had all these x-rays done and EKGs and CAT scans. All these things were done and all looked fine. It all looked good. Even weeks following, I had met with a heart specialist because there weren't any physical explanations for my pain. And during one of my post visit, the doctor told me that they were unable to find a reason for my heart pains. And they asked me, she asked me, is there anything that you're worried about? Anything that you're stressed about? And I said, no. And then she asked, is there anything changing in your life? And I said, yes, the kids are graduate, you know, they just graduated from high school and they're on their way to college. And the doctor told me, that's the cause. That's the cause of your heart pains. Even though I felt like I wasn't stressed or worried about the kids, my body, my heart was. Doctors report that 43, 43% of all adults suffer effects to their, to their health because of worry and stress. 75% of all visits to primary care physicians are stress related. They're stress related. Worry has been linked to all leading causes of death 
including heart disease, cancer, lung conditions, and suicide. Someone once said that ulcers, ulcers are not caused by what you eat, but by what is eating you. Worry can take over our lives. We can obsess with our worries. And what we do, what we're doing is we're telling God that we don't trust in him. And see, in Psalms 37, 3, David has given us clear instructions to trust the Lord and do good by being obedient to the Lord. And when we trust and be obedient, we dwell, meaning we live. We will live and save pastures. Someone define worry as anything that drains your tank of joy, something that you cannot change, something you, can, you are not responsible for, something you are unable to control, something that frightens and torments you, keeps you awake when you should be asleep. That's worry. The word worry means to choke or strangle. And see, Jesus himself, Jesus himself warned us about the kind of worry that chokes the life out of us. In the parable of the sower, Jesus tells us about a seed that fell among the thorns and choked the plants to death. And this is the same for us. This is the same for us. Worry can paralyze our whole being, destroying all our peace and effectiveness in the present. Worry can lead to us being spiritually bankrupt. Spiritually bankrupt. Jesus tells us that the reason that we worry is because we are, we are concerned and worried about the worldly things. We are being worldly minded. We're more concerned about the things of this world than we are with the things of God. And see, when we change our perspective, when we change our perspective, when we trust in the Lord and be obedient to him and out of the things of this world, we are able to dwell, to dwell in him, a place of salvation, a place of safe pastures. There's an old hymn that says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Have you heard the saying, don't sweat the small stuff? Don't sweat the small stuff. And so I want to real quickly share an illustration. Don't you guys just love my illustrations? I want to quickly share an illustration with you this morning. So there was a professor, there was a professor who stood before his class with some items on the table in front of him. And when the class began, he picked up the large empty mason jar and he proceeded to fill it with rocks. He stopped and then he asked the class if the jar was full and the class agreed that it was. And then he picked up a box of gravel and he poured them into the same jar and he shook the jar slightly and the gravel rolled into the open areas between the rocks. And then he asked the students again if the jar was full and the class agreed it was. He then picked up a box of sand and poured it into the jar and the sand filled up everything else inside the jar and he asked the class once more if the jar was full and the class responded yes. The professor said, now I want you to recognize that this large mason jar represents your life. The rocks are the important things your family, your partner, your health, your children, things that if everything else was lost and only they remained, your life would still be full. The gravel is other things that matter, like your job, your house, your car, and the sand is everything else, the small stuff. And see, if you put the sand into the jar first, there's no room for the gravel or the rocks. And the same goes for your life. If you spend all your time and energy on the small stuff, you will never have room for the things that are important to you. Pay attention to the things that are critical to your happiness and your peace. Take care of the rocks first, the things that really matter more. The rest is just sand. See, tears of worry, tears of worry, 
it just turns into a puddle, right? It turns into a puddle and it drips and it just creates a puddle of all the small stuff, the sand. And what that'll do is it'll consume you. It'll consume you like quicksand. Worrying about tomorrow only takes away from the energy, from the energy that you need to live today. Worrying about tomorrow only takes away the strength that you need to live today. And so before I close, I wanted to share an in interesting fact that I read. On the royal roads in India, you'll come across a post that has a sturdy shelf on it. And the natives call this post, they call it Somatonga, which means a resting place. And when people walking by with heavy loads, what they do is they place it. They place the heavy loads on the shelf for relief. And once they're rested, they continue their journey. And see, some, some Christians in India call Jesus my somatoga, my resting place. And so whatever, whatever worries you may have, whatever worries you may have right now, whatever burdens are weighing you down, whatever mental baggage you are carrying, today is the day to find your post. To find your post with the sturdy shelf, your soma toga, find your soma toga, find your soma toga to place those worries, to place those burdens, to place those stresses, to place those sleepless nights, to place those mental baggages on. Find it. Find your soma toga. Place them on your soma toga. Trust in the Lord. Oh, be obedient to his word. Jesus is your resting place. Amen. 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 Now, with that being said, with that being said, I want to make sure that our heart's energy, our heart's energy matches God's energy in here today. And I want to make sure that we give him all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Amen. 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 Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So this morning, I'm going to pray at this altar area with Pastor David's sermon. Again, when I was in seminary, one of our professors said, there's nothing wrong with reading a prayer. And then he said, and most of them were much better wordsmiths than any of you. So as I read a prayer this morning, blessing this area, would you just bow your head and thank God that we're back in this church and that we have an altar space. Blessed are you, O oh God, ruler of the universe. Your gifts are many. In wisdom you have made all things to give your glory. Be with us now as we bless us, as we dedicate our use of this space to your presence and honor, as often as we worship you here, to see us and abide with us, be known to us in the word, word spoken and ears in fellowship with one another. here by the soundboard is a bucket. It says Dimes for Africa. There's another one down in the welcome center. A whole bunch of years ago, John Wilcox, missionary president, found a dime on his street. He's walked along and he found another one. And he walked along and he found another one. Before he got back home, he picked up 37 dimes. And he says, well, God doesn't do things like that for nothing. And he got to talking and asking people and doing a little research. And he found out that one dime would pay one person for one day in Eritrea, Africa. That's where Dimes for Africa is going. Now, 
25 years later, you can no longer feed a person before you die. But we still maintain Dimes for Africa as a program. Last year, $98,000 was raised in dimes. Wow. So we need to, to start doing dimes. I'm a metal here. If any of my state concerned about time, Pastor Dave doesn't have to get out of here until 1130. <laughs> In the same way, he took the cup also after supper. This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in the memory of me. Let's drink and be grateful. Amen, 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 amen. So if you have um, envelopes, make sure everyone has an envelope. And there's just uh, there's other ways to give um, through our Vallejo First app, through Giveify, through Giveify. Oh, yep. The Giveify app. And then we have Vallejo First app you can give. You can text to give through the app. Let's continue to keep Pastor Artiro and Pastor Monica and their family um, in our prayers for their mission trip to Mexico. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray over the offerings today, this morning. Heavenly Father, dear God, today, today, today we bring, we bring our gifts to your house. We know that you will bless us in a mighty way, in a mighty way. Use this gift for your kingdom, dear Heavenly Father. Use, your, use this gift, dear Heavenly Father. 
I know, dear Heavenly Father, that you will bless us. You will bless me. You will bless us because of it. And I thank you. I thank you, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you, dear Lord, for, for how our gift will impact, how our gift will impact the community, the church, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you so much. We receive the blessings that you have in advance for us, dear Heavenly Father. In your name, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we thank all of you for coming out. Let's pray. God, we just come now. We just thank you for your word. We thank you for you just being a blessing to us and through us. Now, God, speak to us in a powerful way. Not me, God, but you, God, speak now this to thy people at this particular time for this particular purpose. And we just give your name all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, listen, listen, we are getting back to our Purpose Driven Life series, our Purpose Driven Life, getting back to focusing on how we can be better in purpose. Amen. And now, Barbara, you got your book with you? All right. You sure didn't get your book? I got you now then. All right. <laughs> All right. But we are just going through Purpose Driven Life and discovering what our purpose is in life and really highlighting that. All right. So today we're going to be looking at Galatians. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. It's going to bless you today. It's going to bless you. And it says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, and that's up there on the screen. It says, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. It says, but for ye, you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So today I want to talk about we are family. We are family. All of us are family. Um, back in the day, there was this uh, group called Sister Sledge. They, made, they sung this song, We Are Family. I got all my sisters with me because it was a whole bunch of them. But it's very important that we understand that we are family. And, um, and let me say this, that God uh, wants a family. And God created you to be part of his family. Uh, you are purpose for God's family. Now notice this, God didn't need a family. He desired a family. So when he desired a family, he, he devised a plan to create us to bring us into God's family and to share all that God has. Now, did you, I mean, watch this. Mark, you didn't know you was my brother, did you? I mean, you're my brother. All right, John, that's my other brother right there. That's Billy, that's my brother. That's Lynn, that's my sister. That's Barbara, that's my sister. She's sitting next to Sherry, that's my sister. And, and the catch it, that's that. I'm mean, catching my sister from Nigeria. Oh, that's, ooh, look at my big brother Jerry over there. All of us are family. All of us are family. So here it is. We are family. Watch this now. And I got the DNA to prove it. <laughs> we, I have the DNA. To prove it, to prove it. Now, you might be saying, well, Pastor, uh, um, DNA, why are you bringing up all of the DNA? Uh, let, let, let me tell you uh, about DNA. That's the, that's the title, you do it again. All right, so here it is at DNA. Check this out. Watch this up, Denisha. DNA stands for, y'all ready? I'm going to try to say it, Lynn. Uh, Deoxyribonucleic nucleic acid. That's what DNA is. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Acid. And it's a molecule that contains the genetic code of our organisms. So a DNA has a double helix shape like a ladder that's twisted into a spiral. And each step of the ladder is a pair of nucleotides. And there are four nucleotides in the DNA. Oh, I sound smart, don't I? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but I just studied up all this. I just I found this out yesterday, a couple days ago. Nucleotides. Yeah, I like saying that. I remember that from um, the clumps. You know, nucleotides. Here, Sherman was talking about the nucleotides. But here it is. This is our DNA. And God is so awesome that he created us with DNA in us that traces back our genetic codes all the way back centuries and centuries. So our genetic code, this thing right here, goes all the way back to where? God. Wow. That, that thing is, is serious. So here it is. Um, that, that, so, so we are family, and I got the DNA to prove it. Okay? All right, so look, we're going to go through this scripture. But before we go through the scripture, I got to tell you a story. It's a real-life story. Um, we went on Ancestry.com. Ancestry.com. We, we sent our, a sample of our DNA to Ancestry.com. And, and now all of these people are coming up who we are related to. 
based by DNA. And it goes from your, you know, the, the closest to your DNA all the way to your sixth cousin. All the way down. So here it is in our family. We just had an uproar because all of us own um, uh, Ancestry.com. And then this guy pops up on our Ancestry chart. Nobody knows him. But he pops up high up like my first cousin. Yeah. I mean, nobody knows him. Then we look at him. And he looked like my uncle <laughs> who then passed away. Nobody knew my uncle had a son from years ago. And now he's connecting. He was adopted somewhere. Now he's connecting with his family because DNA showed him who, what his genetic code was. And I'm saying all this to say that when you go through our genetic code, the DNA, John, we are all family. We're family. For the scripture, scripture says, watch this. Uh, give me the first one. That D in the DNA stands for your descent, your ancestry, your lineage, your descent, your, your descendant. The, Bible, the scripture says, for you are all children of God. You're all children of God. Amen. All of us are connected. Uh, Y'all ain't saying amen. Uh, we all family. Come on, let's just, be, uh, let's just be loose with each other. Let's just be real. Look around. We all are family. We look different, but we all family. For we are all children of God. And watch this. Um, uh, Lynn, I grew up in a family where it was a whole bunch of us. And, and, and my mother and them told us, look, when y'all go somewhere, make sure you watch your family. And if somebody mess with one of you, they got to mess with all of you. So here it is. I'm telling y'all today that we are all family. And then here it is. We're all together. Okay, you're not getting excited about being family. Well, let me show you something. I want to show you something. That when we realize that for we are the children of God, we're all the children of God, that means we take on the family name. Give me the slide. That means we take on the family name. And according to 1 John 3 and 1, look at it. We take on the family name. The family name, it says in 1 John 1 and, uh, 3 and 1, it says, See what an incredible quality of love the Father has given shown bestowed on us that we should be watch this permitted to be permitted to be named and called and counted what the children of God and so we are the reason that the world does not know recognize and acknowledge us is that they don't know they does not it does not know recognize and acknowledge him God has given us the family name here it is, you thinking your name is Lynn Epp, but really your name is Lynn Epp, child of God. You think your name is Denisha Patterson, but really your name is Denisha Patterson, child, uh-oh, Hope. You think your name is Hope Bordeno, but it really is Hope Bordeno, child of God. Yeah, put the rest on it, and then you act differently. Amen. Somebody said, what's your name? Uh, David Hartfield Dow, child of God. I mean, so you even act different when you realize that you're carrying this name. So we have the family name when we are the child of God. And then secondly, Look, we have a family likeness. Give me this next slide. And according to Romans 8 and 29, check this out. We have a likeness like our father. And it says, oh, Jerry got a, he kind of bend around. Can you see it, Jerry? All right. He says, for, uh, for those whom he foreknew, uh, whom he was aware and loved beforehand, he also destined from the beginning, foreordained them to be molded into the image of his son. And share inward his, inwardly his likeness that he might become the firstborn of mourn brethren. So it is, we look like our big brother Jesus. Amen. If, if we have the likeness. God, look, um, when you look at me, you should be able to see a, re a resemblance of Jesus. That's powerful, huh? Oh, man. So, so if I'm supposed to resemble him, Mark, that means I need to act a certain way. <laughs> I need to represent the family in a good way. Okay, y'all, okay, I, I'm, I'm not going to stay there too long. Family likeness. And then the third thing, when we are all a family, that means we have family privileges. Family privileges. And that's in Galatians 4, 6 and 7. It says this. Galatians 4, 6 and 7. It, that's kind of small. I need to make it bigger next week because I even need to walk up on it. Uh, you can tell... For sure that you are now fully adopted as his own children because God sent the spirit of his son into our lives crying out, Papa, Father. Watch this. Doesn't that privilege of intimate conversation with God make it plain that you are not a slave but a child? And if you are a child, you're also an heir with complete access, watch this, to inheritance. So God gives us access. This, 
it's privileges I have being part of the family. Are, are y'all getting this? Just think about, your, think about your human family. It's privileges that you have being part of the human family. Privileges. Okay, okay, y'all ain't saying amen. Last week, Mark, do you remember? Ja Jasmine, do you remember? I talked about the German chocolate upside down cake last week. I said my family, and my aunt is here from Alabama, my family, and because I have privileges, I, my aunt called me on Thursday, hey, your cake is done because I got privileges. I got privileges. So I drove all the way out there and, and, and on Friday, and a cake was there. Nobody had cut it because they told them there was David's cake. I said, okay, it is my cake. So I got a whole cake because I had privileges. Y'all ain't saying amen. And it's good too. Brought it home and I'm not, I just cut me a big piece. Somebody, a couple of y'all going to get a piece today. Amen. Just surprise you. But it's privileges that you have and I can walk in the house, talk to my aunt, talk to my uncle, go in the refrigerator, eat something, get something to drink because I have privileges for being part of the family. God says, look, you have the same privileges. Come on in. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to nurture you. Ain't no reason for you to worry because you're part of the family. Amen. 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 So here it is. God says, look, you, you have family privileges. And then, watch this. Uh, I got to go into more of it. You have, you have a family intimate access. Family intimate access. And that's in Romans 5 and 2. Romans 5 and 2 says, through him also we have our access, which means an interest, an entrance, introduction by faith into the grace of state of God's favor in which we firmly and safely stand and let us rejoice and exult in our hope of experiencing and enjoying the glory of God. So I can, I have access, intimate access. I mean, watch this. My father welcomes me, hugs me, kisses me on my head, then tells me, go on intimate accent. I can lay on my father's chest and cry tell him all about my trouble tell him all about my problems and my father will wipe my tears away and take care of me. My father when I need something to eat, I have intimate access to the father. Amen. Y'all just, just looked at me funny when I said kiss me. Amen but don't you know God kisses you to wake you up in the morning? You don't? Okay yeah see see Sherry not believing me. She not, at least she looking at you. And Barbara sitting there, watch this. Everybody take a deep breath, go like this. You see how your lips are perched? Ain't it shaped like, like, like you're ready for a kiss or something? You see that? That's breath coming in. So what do you think God does to give you breath? Genesis, it said he stooped down and breathed into them. Breathed into the nostrils. Where's your nostrils? Right under your mouth. Above your mouth, excuse me. I said under your mouth. That's strange. <laughs> your nostrils right above your mouth. So it's right. So God breathes into it. That's intimate access. Just know that you have an intimate. An intimate means it's close. It's personal. You can share it all with your father. Are y'all hearing me? You can, you can be who you want to be. Or you ain't got to put on no airs. Just be you around your father. Amen. Are y'all getting this? So, because I'm, I'm, I don't want to take too long. And then, lastly, uh oh, this should shout you. You should. You have a. You have a. Um, a family inheritance. A family inheritance. Uh, God makes sure that we have an inheritance, and that's found in First Peter three five three through five. It says praise, and that word praise literally means honored or blessed. Be to the God our Father, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. By his boundless mercy, we have been born again to an everlasting, ever living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ for whom, from um, Jesus Christ from the dead. Excuse me. And next, and this is verse four coming up. Uh, and then we've been born anew into an inheritance. Y'all see that word? Inheritance, which is beyond the reach of decay, change and decay, imperishable, unsullied and unfading, reserved in heaven for who? No, no, I ain't going to say it. Reserved in heaven for who? Huh? For us. So it's reserved in heaven for you. You got an inheritance reserved. Uh-oh, so if you got an inheritance, that means you never broke. Are y'all hearing me? 
So stop saying I'm broke. Just say I'm in between blessings. All right. Never say I'm broke, but just say I'm in between blessings because God's going to make sure you have what you need when you need it. Next verse. And he says, who are being guarded, who are being guarded, garrisoned by God's power through your faith till you fully inherit that final salvation that is ready to re be revealed for you in the last time. So even your inheritance is being guarded. Nobody can take it, pillage it, or try to squander it. God is guarding your inheritance yourself. Everybody in here who's part of the family has an inheritance. Amen. 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 I'm glad to know that I, I don't have a 401k. I got, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to make up a name real quick. I got a 333k. Amen. One for the Wilder, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. Amen. I got a special uh, K in heaven. God has set it up for all of us to have inheritance. And there's some seniors and some uh, uh, people of wisdom here who are up in age. They know what it's like to set it up so your children can be taken care of when we leave here. They set up inheritance so they won't have to struggle or worry about things. Kids ain't worried about nothing, but we worried about them trying to set them up for when we leave. But here it is, God says, I got you covered because you have an inheritance. So when you come to me, you get your inheritance. Mm, that's good right there. Now, I don't, look, look, and I'm looking forward to the inheritance of God. So watch this. So when we are part of the family of God, we have family riches. We have family, we have a family fortune. And, and they come, uh, they're given in all kind of ways. Look, we have riches, uh, we have riches of God's grace. We have the riches of God's kindness. We have the riches of patience. We have the riches of glory. We have the riches of wisdom. We have the riches of power. And we have the riches of mercy. God gives us, he shares his fortune. Don't you know you have an abundance of mercy? You didn't know that, huh? You, do, you know you have an abundance of grace? You're rich with grace. It never runs out. Oh, uh, I'm going to have to stop here. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Let me say, Billy is the only one that said amen. You got an abundance. If you didn't have a whole bunch of grace, you would be messed up right now. If you didn't have a whole bunch of uh, abundance of mercy, woo-wee, where would you be? If you didn't have an abundance of God's love or God's kindness, where would you? We are rich. We have a family fortune full of grace, full of mercy, full of, I mean, we just got a whole bunch of it. God never runs out. And if we're part of the family, we never run out of grace. That's good to know as part of the family. That when I get up in the morning and wipe my sleep out of my eyes and get something cold water to drink, I can look in the cupboard. Oh, there you go, grace. I got some more grace. I'm never running out of grace. Grace is always available. And when grace is always available from the family, guess what? That means forgiveness is available. When forgiveness is available, that means mercy is available. When mercy is available, that means love is just all over the place. I'm good. I'm off my paper now. So here it is. When I'm part of the family, I know I'm loved. I know I got grace. I know I got mercy. I got it all. Because I'm part of the family. Anybody here glad to be part of the family? We are family. And I got the DNA to prove it. Got the DNA to prove it. So the D is the descent. The, I mean, it, it stands for your ancestry lineage. Let's go to the N. Let's go to the N. The N is uh, necessary. The N is very important. It's necessary. Because it says, we are all children of God. Watch this. By faith. Through faith. That's necessary. It's necessity. is needed. We got to have faith. When we place our faith in Christ, we become, God becomes our father. We become God's children. Other believers become our brothers and sisters. The church becomes our spiritual family. But the family of God includes all believers from past, present, and future. So here it is, is that when we come to God and realize that we are his children by faith, Ah, here it is. That word faith is necessary. And just the word by. Give me this next slide. Just the word by means a channel or an act. So if you see this aisle here, that's, a, that's like a channel that you walk through. An highway that you go through. This is how we become 
the children of God by faith. We go this way to become the children of God. You just can't come in any old kind of way. You got to come by faith. It's necessary. It's necessary. Go back to that DNA model. If you go back to the DNA model and see the double helix, all of that is the nucleotides are necessary to trace your genetic piece. Here it is. Faith is necessary for me being part of the family. Amen. So here it is. That word faith just literally means a persuasion. It literally means truthfulness of God. Can I say that again? Faith means the truthfulness of God. So when you think about God, truth, that's God. So, so when you think about God and the truthfulness of God, that's what faith is. Faith is your conviction, our reliance upon Christ for salvation. It's our belief. It's an assurance. So that's what faith is. It's what I have a conviction for, what I believe in. I just last, uh, last Monday, just this past Monday, I went and did a wedding in Menlo Park. And I had to, I got, I started talking to some people who didn't believe in God. Didn't believe in God. They start talking about the cosmic bang theory and how infinity, you know, the infinity symbol, how it recycles. And I'm listening. I'm going, okay. And they, they quizzing me about God. I said, okay. Well. And then I just asked them. I said, look, we're standing here, Half Moon Bay. Beautiful rocks, water, beach. I said, um, how do you think all this came about? <laughs> I said, where do you think it came from? Oh, 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 I see where you're going with this. No, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just trying to ask you, where did you think all this came from? Huh? Huh? Yeah, just, so where do you think it came from? And then they, yeah, well, well, it could have came from the cosmic, but no, I, you can't say it came from a photosynthesis on a rock because the rock had to come from somewhere. And then you know, everything had a beginning and it all began with God. That's, that's what I was just getting them to. I'm like, look, you got to begin with God. Because this just didn't happen by accident. If it happened by accident, it still would be happening by accident. Y'all didn't say nothing. Okay, how many of y'all believe that we came from monkeys? No. Because if we came from monkeys, that means some monkeys would still be evolving right now. They'll be coming out of the zoo saying, oh, I'm here, cousin. How you doing? <laughs> They'll be knocking on your door saying, I just got out. I just evolved. I'm hungry. I'm tired of bananas. It would happen that way because that's what evolution says. It happens over a process of time. But no, we are the children of God and we come by faith and our faith is in this word and the word tells us that God created it all and in the beginning God in the beginning God created. That's what we believe. That's our faith. Amen, somebody. That's my conviction. That's what I believe. I'm here because of the blood of Jesus. I'm here because of my faith. My faith keeps me. My faith, that's the channel that I become out of God. Got to say it. Because you got to come through faith. By faith. You got to be willing to say yes. God is the creator. Uh, yes, Jesus is my Lord. You got to be born again. Amen. So here it is. Watch this. Because it, it, it's interesting. Your first birth, you, you become part of a human family. Your second birth, you become part of God's family, a spiritual family. So you, so you got your first birth and then you're born again when you accept Jesus to your life and you become part of the spiritual family. That's how you become part of the family. It, it, it's necessary. I can't just bounce in without going through Jesus. Yeah, I said it. I can't. I can't. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to say this and then we're going to get ready to close. Uh, I used to hang out with a, a, a Muslim minister, an imam, a minister Andrew X. I didn't told y'all this story before. Um, but uh, me and, me and, we used to kick it tight in San Jose and then finally one day he said, man, you would make a good Muslim imam. You know, you would make a good Muslim minister. I said, yeah. I said, I would. I would. Gene Ann, I said, yeah, I would. I said, but there's one problem. He said, what's that? I said, Muhammad didn't die for me. Jesus did. <laughs> that was my, I said, that's my faith, man. I said, Muhammad didn't get up. Jesus did. I, so, so there, 
from then on we didn't have that conversation anymore because he knew I was solid in my faith and as long as you are convicted and solid that you know what you know and can't nobody talk you out of it can't nobody make you doubt it can't nobody knock on your door and you don't answer can't nobody come with no shirt and tie white shirt black tie and try to convince you of something else here it is and, 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 and can't nobody who, however smart they are they mentioned uh, the guys the people from uh, Menlo Park mentioned uh, what's his name Neil deGrasse and how smart he is and he's his PhD and he was they mentioned they quoted him I said still starts with God <laughs> amen so here it is it, it's, you, watch this I'm going to say this and I'm going because there, there's two there's, there's two levels of degrees. You can go to college, Jamie, and get some degrees. I understand you rocket scientist, all that, rocket engineer. I know, you rocket engineer. I understand you, you got some degrees. You're a smart dude. Jasmine's smart. Uh, there's other people in here who've gone to college. But when you become a child of God, you get a BA. You're born again. You get a BA. Amen. Then you get a BS. You're born of the Spirit. And then you get, a, you get your masters because you start mastering all doubt. You start mastering all trouble. You start mastering all difficulty in life. And then you get your PhD. You pass having doubt because you know God will, God can. So somebody else say, hey, what's up, doc? You, you look good. <laughs> Didn't know you had degrees. We're all family. And God wants, so it's necessary that we do it by faith. In, through faith. That's how the channel is. That's, watch this. Oh, it just hit me. Alicia, there you go. You are born through a channel to come into the world. You got to be born into God through a channel and it's called faith. Okay. Oh, that's good. Put that on tape right there. I'm just now seeing that. Alicia. Even though both our kids were born C-section, they, you know, it still had to come out of somewhere. Amen. So here it is. Here it is. Watch this. Watch this. So, um, so the D stands for descent. The N stands for necessary. So we are family and I got the DNA to prove it. Let me give you the A. The A is we are adopted. The adoption. And it says, um, it says uh, we are, let me read the scripture. I want to be right. For you are all the children of God by faith, through faith. Watch this. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. So, so if you're in, that means what? You're not out. That's as simple as I can get it. And, and when you are adopted, who's ever adopted is desired by the, the adoptees. They want who they adopt. They just don't, you don't force it on them to adopt. When you are adopted, most, 98% of the time, <laughs> You, you are wanted to be adopted. Those who are adopted, you want to adopt. So here it is, is that the adoption happens is that we are in Christ Jesus. We can't whiz by that word in. The word in means to be a fixed position in place, in time, or state. It's a fixed position in place, in time, or state. It's to me, is a place of rest. It's where you are. And the word Christ, it said Christ Jesus. Christ is the title. Jesus is the name. Christ is the title, the Messiah, the anointed one. Jesus is the name. They had to specify who you were a family a part of and who you were adopted with in Christ Jesus. It was a lot of people in that time going around trying to confess to be the Messiah, but they had to designate which one they were talking about in Christ Jesus, the anointed one, Jesus himself. And you are fixed. It's, your faith is fixed. It has a face, uh, fixed position that you are adopted, you are wanted, chosen, chosen and picked, accepted just as you are. You became a part of the fact you adopted. And when you adopted, you're his. And, the, and you're fixed in the family with Jesus. Yes. With you in Christ Jesus. Now if I'm in him, nothing can take me out of him. Are y'all listening to me? The only thing that can take me out of him is me, myself. 
<sighs> so here it is, is that I can do some things that just, just take me out of it. But here it is, God says, no, watch this. So adoption, let's go to the next side. Adoption is priceless. Adoption is pure. Adoption is permanent. And adoption is protected. Do you hear what I'm saying? When you adopted in Christ Jesus, it's priceless. When you adopted in Christ Jesus, it's pure. When you adopted in Christ Jesus, it's permanent. When you adopted in Christ Jesus, it's protected. So don't feel scared. Don't get worried. Don't let the, uh, the world get you all boggled down on what's going on in the world. Know that you have been adopted. You're in Christ Jesus. There's an acceptance. No one can take you from it. It can't be destroyed by war. It can't be destroyed by a poor economy. It can't be destroyed by an epidemic. It can't be destroyed by the ins and the outs of the world. What we have, we have and it's protected. So I'm in Christ Jesus. And if I'm in Christ Jesus, ooh, I'm a bad son of God. Woo! If I'm in Christ Jesus, you a bad daughter of God. If I'm in Christ Jesus, you, you something else, boy. God loves me. And, and my wife, watch this, I'm done, y'all. My wife always teases me because I'm a part of a family where they spoiled me. I was spoiled by my mother. I was spoiled by my little big cousins. I was spoiled by, I'm, I mean, I'm just, I'm finding out I was just spoiled left and right. Amen. And, 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 and I, don't get mad. Don't, don't be, don't hate the player, hate the game. See what I'm saying? Uh -uh. I, everybody just spoiled me because I was Shirley's son and, and you know, my dad wasn't around. So everybody just really nurtured. And I'm finding out I really was really, really, really spoiled. But, but it, it's, it's wonderful because that was just my family. And they still spoil me today. You see, I got my cake. You see, I got my cake. Amen. They still spoil me today. And I love it. And I'm saying all that to say is that God spoils you. Oh, yo, yo, okay. I'm closing with this. He woke you up this morning. Started you on your, he spoiled you by giving you life. He spoiled you by giving you breath to breathe. He spoiled you by giving a step and leaving the ground under it. He spoiled you by not letting no hurt, harm, or danger come your way. He spoiled you by making sure you made it to 55, 70, 80, 22, whatever age you are. He spoiled you by making sure you got through the accident, got through the rehabilitation, had kids, got married to a wonderful husband, and still in church today. He spoiled you to, to make sure you hurt your foot but it's going to heal and when you get it healed he's going to look at it and go oh God it sure is good. He spoiled you to make sure you're here today. God spoils us. He gives us everything we need and some of the things we want. That's yeah. He gives you everything you need and some of the things you want and that's a good parent. To make sure that we are. And I'm telling y'all this. I'm done. We are all family. And I got the DNA to prove it. Your descent. The necessary and adoption. Shows. That we are children of God. Amen. So. Since we are all family. I'm going to act a little bit differently with y'all now. I may just pop up and eat at the table. Somebody invite me. <laughs> I'm part of the family. If Jerry, come on, let's let's if we're all family, let's look at each other differently. Fellowship is necessary. Yes. Loving each other is necessary. Oh. Caring for each other is necessary. Yes. Praying for each other is essential. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. When one of us hurt, all of us hurt. We have a big sister in the hospital that we need to keep praying for Dorothy because if she that's our sister yes. amen so here it is that we gotta understand that part of the purpose that God has us here is to, for us to be part of the family he didn't create us to be by ourselves so even if you live alone just you and somebody else still not alone you have a huge family are y'all hearing me yes. I brag I brag all the time about my human family I said in 1984 my grandmother had 65 grandchildren 12 great grandchildren 3 great great grandchildren I know because she bragged it all the time I'm part of the 65 the 65 didn't had kids so now we up to like 200 easy when we get together 
But that's small compared to God's family. God's family said, look, I'm up to a million three and 3,568 in I made up the name. I don't know if that's really a word, John. I don't know. But that's the number is so astronomical is I can't fathom it. Amen. Can't fathom it. It's just so huge. So look around as we get as we close right now. Look around. See your brother? You see your sister? This sister right here, she always got her hair done. Look at her. She, she always got her hair done. My brother right here, he always keeps me on point. That brother right there, he's always waving, always smiling. Just that's it. my sister right there. Yeah, she'll get you. Don't mess with me. <laughs> my, my brother right there, he came all the way from South Africa to see me today. Amen. Hey man, my sister back there, Jean, she, she watches after me too. She makes she see everything. Hey Amen. There go my other brother, Jose, all the way from Cuba. We are all family. And when we look at it that way, we begin to pray for each other, love each other differently. There's no separatism. God says, you're all my children. Hey Amen. Let me close with this. <laughs> let's pray God we just come now we just thank you for this word oh now we are all family and God we just ask that you look over us guide us strengthen us keep us close to thee and God we just ask that you just just uh, continue to nurture us guide us and um, we just love you so listen listen if you are here here again if you're here and you never accepted the Lord into your life, at this time we want to offer Christ to you. Offer oh, Christ. Turn it up just a little bit. Yeah. We want to offer Christ to you. This is my sister. This is our sister from Atlanta. Amen. Who's singing the song. So if you're here and you never accepted the Lord into your life, never asked him to be your Lord and Savior, if that's you today, just lift your hand. Lift your hand. We offer Christ to you. We offer Christ to you. Maybe here you say, well, Pastor, I've asked Christ to come into my life, but I've lived in such a way to where it's just so crazy. I just need to rededicate my life to God today. Get back on that road, that channel that, of faith. Recommit my life to God today. If that's you, rededicate your life. Just lift your hand. Lift your hand. Lift your hand. Amen. And maybe you're here, you say, well, Pastor, I've accepted the Lord. I'm doing okay. I just want to be part of this family. And I just want to make Vallejo First Church of the Nazarene, the great church, my church home. I want to make this a place where I meet other, other family members and just have them love on me. I love on them. If that's you, just lift your hand. Amen. Lift your hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Jose. All right, Jose. Amen. Amen. So I've seen some hands go up. Jose, you want to? I thought you already became part of the family outside. So you, you already in. All right, that's Jose. All right. Amen. Jean Ann, you already part of the family too. Amen. All right. Amen. Now listen, lastly, if you believe that you are part of the family, if you believe that you're part of the family, just give God a hallelujah praise. Hallelujah praise. Amen. Listen, we get ready to leave this place, but never from his presence. Uh, the safe space worship starts outside at 1130. Feel free not to leave immediately. Go down to the journey room and get you a snack to leave. Listen, listen to me. You have permission to go and take a couple of snacks and keep them in your purse, Sherry. Lynn, keep them in your purse because, you know, we, we get running around, Hope. Keep them in the car and you need a snack. My wife will tell you, I got snacks in the car all the time because we rip, rip and run and we need a snack. Jerry, you can put some in your office. Hey Amen. Ricky, you put some in your car. I mean, that's what it's there for us to share. And then we didn't have the pictures up this week, but we're going to make it sure that we have one collage done by this week because I got the pictures. I just got to put them in. So we're going to have one collage and some other historic stuff up next week. So get ready to see that stuff. And each week, we're going to put up a new collage of... Uh, Vallejo First Church of the Nazarene history. 
And then as that goes through, we, are, we got how many pictures? Hundreds, thousands? Hundreds of pictures, so we're going to cycle them out. Because it's only 108 can go up at a time. So we're going to keep sight. So just keep going to the journey. It's been our journey. Amen. Thank you, Denisha, for being here. Good to see you, Jay, man. All right, good to see you and Jose. All right, Jean Ann. All right, listen. Let's all stand. All right, amen. Repeat after me. Say, Lord, let there be more of thee and less of thee. Until one day there's all of thee and none of me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. I'm getting that and keep the timing. And, and then, listen, we just got to do it. John, I need to talk to you before you leave, okay? Real quickly. I just need to say it one more time. One more time. I need y'all to listen to this. I need y'all to hear this. Praise the Lord. You didn't start something here, Nikesha. You didn't start something. All right, y'all go in peace. Be blessed.